So the SEC will not go undefeated in the bowl season of 2014 and 2015. Mark Rogers TV just a few seconds after Kyle Brinza knocked home the game winner for Notre Dame to upset LSU 31-28 at the Music City Bowl. So it's only the Music City Bowl, but because of the name brands involved in this game, I, I think this is a pretty big football game for both programs and specifically for Notre Dame, which needed to win a non-conference game in a big situation, especially against the SEC, and they finally pulled it off in this one over the LSU Tigers. So let's take it from the top. LSU came in with the SEC's number one rated defense, giving up just 308 yards per game. The storyline of this game overall was the coaching decision of Brian Kelly to start Malik Zaire over Everett Golson, who had turned it over 22 times this season. Golson, very talented quarterback. We could see it in this game and pretty much can credit him for leading most of the game-winning drive in this one. But Golson, 22 turnovers. That plays out to 14 interceptions and eight fumbles lost for Golson this season. And that's after no turnovers in the first four games. So after that, he was a complete disaster, uh, despite throwing 29 touchdown passes and coming within a pick play of upsetting number one Florida State in Tallahassee. Okay, back to this game. Malik Zaire, talented uh, sophomore, gets the call. Completed 12 of 15, very safe passes, especially out of the gate. Uh, Kelly and his staff did a nice job of designing plays that would uh, get Zaire into the comfort level of the game, get him into the flow of the game, get him loosened up, get him confident in completing some passes. Uh, he converted a fourth and seven on a power run in which he broke contain and powered his way through a couple defenders on that first drive. And then uh, William Fuller, the talented sophomore with the touchdown reception, his 15th touchdown catch of the season. Uh, and so Notre Dame led it 7 to nothing. And the Irish had seven different players touch the football on that opening drive. It was very impressive. LSU comes back after a third and out, a three and out. Uh, Notre Dame made it all the way down to the LSU 20 the next time they had the ball. And again, it was a fourth down play. But this time the LSU defense stood their ground, and it was defensive end Tyshawn Bauer, and it was also the safety Jamal Adams, the freshman who has been extremely impressive over the last several weeks. Jamal Anderson finishing off the stop of Zaire on fourth down in the backfield to keep it at 7 to nothing. Then LSU went on a 76-yard drive. Uh, Trayvon Durrell with the trick play, a fumble ruski that did not hit the ground at 25-yard play, and uh, Mr. Fournette, Finish things off on the top sweep to the left, and it was 7-7. Uh, Golson came into the game, uh, showed his throwing ability, which at this point is accelerated over uh, Mr. Zaire. He's a, he's a better pocket passer at this point than Zaire. Golson completed a third and eight conversion through a laser, stood in the pocket, delivered that. Zaire finished the drive. Notre Dame scored again. Then, Wow. Leonard Fournette. What can you say about this guy? He's just a freshman. He came in with all the accolades of being the best in high school, and he is one of the best already in the SEC at running back. Returning a kick, he, he reminded me on the play of Todd Gurley. This is something that it's almost being, the, the, the torch being passed is best back in the SEC from Gurley to Fournette, 100 yards on the return, and we were all uh, tied up at 14. The power of the speed combination is amazing. Key play in this game, and especially it, it uh, who knows what would have played out in the second half had the game been tied. Uh, LSU drove it down the field in the waning moments of the first half, got it down to uh, inside the Notre Dame five-yard line, set up for a field goal and a fourth and goal play at the four. Okay, snapper took it, Brad Cragthorpe. And initially, it looked like he was stopped short of the goal line, and Notre Dame made the stand, and the clock would tick out the last four or five seconds. But upon further review, it appeared to me as though Craig Thorpe broke the plane. The key in this is that it was decided that it was a stop on the field. Therefore, the video evidence had to be uh, conclusive to decide to overturn the call. And it was not. Couldn't see uh, Craig Thorpe's entire body, but it appeared as though he was still up uh, off his knees when he reached forward and the two or three inches at the end of the football, touched the goal line. I thought it was a touchdown. Again, I can't argue with it not being conclusive video evidence and going with the call on the field. 
So, huge play there. Instead of 21 all at the half, LSU still down 21 to 14. Tigers came out uh, early third quarter, established themselves uh, via the big play in non-conventional ways. Uh, the Jennings uh, play action pass, a 75-yard pass to John the Ars for the 20, the 75-yard touchdown to make it 21 all. Anthony Jennings gave us what he's given us the entire season and going back to last bowl season against Iowa. Uh, he's a marginal quarterback. He's got some agility. He can he can run. He's a dual threat of sorts. He's not dynamic uh, on the outside, but he just can't deliver the football consistently. Seven of 14, buck 51. He's a 48% passer in college football in this day and age when 60 to 65% is pretty standard, 48%. So LSU needs to address that, or they're not going to rise to the top of the SEC West again, not with Ole Miss and Mississippi State uh, developing their programs, Alabama, where they are, Auburn, despite a few late season losses, I expect them to be extremely good in 2015, Texas A&M and Arkansas, based on what we saw out of Brandon Allen, Managing the game and delivering the ball when he needed to against Texas, LSU could be hurting. They could be on that Texas A&M end uh, if they don't get things in place. We know that the talent is coming in and continues to in droves, but they need a quarterback that's capable. Jennings, 7 of 14, it just was not, not pretty. It wasn't that good because, again, some broken plays, trick plays contributed to that yardage. Uh, the next time LSU got the ball, there goes Fournette for 89 yards right at the gut. 28-21 LSU. Fournette, a beast in this game. He only ran it 11 times. 143 yards, two touchdowns. Notre Dame comes back. C.J. Procise after LSU had the touchdown lead and the ball at midfield. So this was a key point in the game late in the third quarter when LSU could have created some distance. Ball at midfield, seven-point lead. But there was miscommunication between Jennings and Fournette. Ball pops up in the air. Notre Dame gets it. A couple plays later, C.J. Procise, the junior wide receiver. He's only had seven rushing attempts this year coming into the game. Got the ball three times on the ground in this game, and this was the big one. 50 yards down the right sideline to make it a 28-28 game. Okay, let's go to the fourth quarter because basically they punted back and forth. Notre Dame at its own 14-yard line. Just about three to four minutes left to play. Golson comes in. He completes 14 yards to Fuller on a second and 15. That was impressive. And this kid, William Fuller, uh, despite a big drop late in the game that didn't cost them, but could have cost them, five catches, 57 yards, and a touchdown for Fuller. This kid, sophomore, 76 receptions and 15 touchdowns this year. So again, with Kelly going with both quarterbacks, he didn't commit to a quarterback for this final drive. He was back and forth all over the place. He didn't even wait for a first down to be completed, that he was sending in guys after a successful, let's say, first down play. And on second and three, he's sending the other guy in. It just didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But uh, Notre Dame stuck with it, and they were successful. Again, Golson, 14 yards to Fuller on a second and 15. That was huge. Uh, I alluded to the Fuller drop at the LSU 48. That could have been big, but then Golson stepped up again on a third and 10, completed to the senior tight end, Ben Koyak, who caught 29 passes this year. That was a 12-yarder to convert the first down. Then Folston for 16 yards from Golston to the 30. Golst, uh, Folston had a uh, pretty standard day here, 21 carries, 73 yards, and uh, but he made a big cut on this play. Uh, got behind the, the uh, defensive line, caught a short pass, uh, made a defender miss, and, and broke it for 16 yards to the 30. That was another big play in the final drive. So LSU sets up for the 32-yard field goal. Kyle Brins of the senior. Good to see him walk off the field as a champion, as a winner on his last field goal attempt. He had his worst season in 2014, 13 of 23 in the regular season, but he knocked this one home. Notre Dame. Finishes 8-5 with a win over LSU, 31-28. to uh, Looking ahead to 2015, we've got Notre Dame's first three games. Texas, interesting, at Virginia and Georgia Tech. For LSU, unfortunately, they play no games out of conference. Ah, they should be embarrassed. I hate to see this. LSU usually schedules somebody 
It's Wisconsin next season. It was Wisconsin in 2014. It's been Washington. It's been Virginia Tech. It's been a number of schools. LSU, don't be a Vandy. Don't be a Mississippi State. Play somebody in the non-conference. Next year, it's McNeese State, Syracuse, Eastern Michigan, Western Kentucky. I know you can fall back on the SEC West being the best division in college football, at least right now it is. But you got to play some non-conference games. That's the whole point of this playoff. It, sh it should be that you need to play. You should be playing two or three teams, not just one, but at least play one. They've got the Syracuse game. Okay. So LSU not playing anybody non-conference, and they've got to they've got to find a quarterback. So either Brandon Harris is going to make up the strides to fulfill his potential, his ceiling uh, during the offseason, or Anthony Jennings needs to improve as a passer. Now, based on the entirety of 13 games plus the end of 2013, I don't know that Anthony Jennings has it in him to be more than a 50% passer. And LSU is not going to spread you out and throw it for 450 yards, but they need playmaking ability in the pocket during the, the clutch, in the clutch moments. All right, my take on LSU Notre Dame, exciting game, fighting Irish win at 31-28. Would love to hear what you have to say right here on Mark Rogers TV.